Father, we thank you so much for today. For the grace and mercy you show us, we do not take it for granted. We bless you. We magnify you. We exalt your holy name this morning. As we come together to share your word, may the Holy Spirit speak to us and beckon us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. This morning's devotion is titled, Demonstrating Sonship in the Marketplace. Every marketplace, formal or informal, has both fiscal and spiritual dimensions, and God's mandate to his children is to dominate in both dimensions. Successfully, dominating the marketplace is a function of governance based on identity, not necessarily hierarchy. How we operate and what we demonstrate is closely tied to who we are representing. So as representatives of Jesus, we must understand five key areas that will impact our execution of this mandate. And these key areas are God's agenda, our assignment, our empowerment, our tribe, and our opposition. We start with God's agenda. Psalm 24 verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belongs to him. Everything is the Lord's and we are simply managers. Regarding how to disperse the gifting, skills, money, etc. we are given. This understanding that we are stewards of what the Lord has entrusted us with forces us to keep an internal perspective on our decision making and helps us always consider God's agenda ahead of any and everything else. It has always been the Lord's agenda for his children to rule on earth because as carriers of his presence, everywhere the children of God shows up, his kingdom has shown up. While some of his children are assigned to the pulpit, the majority are intentionally planted in different industries, sectors, economies, nations. So Jesus has representation in the sphere. Let's read First John 3, 8. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus was very clear on his agenda that is to destroy the works of Satan in whatever way it may have manifested. And as representatives, we are also to establish the kingdom of God wherever we are present, shining his light. This light comes through the character of, sorry, this light comes through the character we demonstrate, the solutions we bring to resolve challenges the innovations we develop, and above all, the love we walk daily. Through what we partner with God to do in, with, and through us, he draws people to who he is so they can also be part of his kingdom and walk in deeper depths with him. A second one, our assignment. Jesus has an extremely high level of intentionality regarding our respective assignments as he plants us in different areas. So he has representation in that sphere. As we represent him, we are both spiritually and naturally productive, impacting others and ever expanding the sphere of his kingdom. Wherever a son or a daughter of God shows up, his kingdom has shown In Jeremiah 1.5, it reads, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. We all have our appointments inbuilt into our spirits and our gifting, skill sets, etc. 
are all designed to align with our appointments so we function effectively in our roles. However, our reality may not reflect this for a variety of reasons, including expectations of family, society, etc. None of these negates God's plan and his own expectations of us, which means we could be functioning in a particular field while God has made provision for us to function in another industry. While we may make money, get professional accolades and recognition from others, but from heaven's perspective, we are out of alignment with our assignment. The first step to knowing if we are in our right assignment is to ask the giver of the assignment to reveal what he is written concerning us. It will be dangerous to assume. And where the Lord reveals to us that we are not, we ask for mercy and the grace and strategy to get back on track. This is critical, so we don't spend valuable time pursuing what comes out for us in eternity. The third one, our empowerment. We read First John 4.4. 4. He who is in you is greater than who is in the world. When we engage in the marketplace, we do so as children of God, who are acting in the capacity of representatives of Jesus, which means as carriers of his presence, we also have access to whatever supernatural empowerment Jesus had during his earthly ministry. This alone is more than enough to distinguish us in our place of assignment. When a believer shows up in the marketplace, such a person isn't disadvantaged as we are carriers of the Holy Spirit who gives us access to supernatural wisdom, understanding, direction, capacity, knowledge, all balanced with integrity because we fear the Lord. The Holy Spirit tells us what is to come so we can position ourselves, businesses, industries for the future. His presence in our lives reminds us of who we are and whose we are so we don't get so overwhelmed trying to make a living that we lose sight of while we are there in the first place. The pressures of life are real and for us to maximize the impact of our empowerment, we must consistently prioritize our relationship with the Lord, setting up the necessary systems that will keep us connected to him. This way, when the challenges show up, we can quickly tap into the rich reserve of his unlimited power, shining our light and drawing others to him through the uniqueness of our response. Our tribe, the fourth one. We read Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. I will say that the meaning of tribe is a group of persons with a common character, belief, occupation, or interest. So God doesn't design us to walk this journey of life by ourselves. He recognizes the power of being closely connected to the right people in himself of joy or challenges. This is why he connects us to tribes, specific people assigned to help us stay motivated and on track in our walk with God, our assignment and living a fulfilled and productive life. As the days get darker, it becomes even more critical that we accurately be same and are closely connected to the right people. Let's read Daniel 2, 17 and 18. Then Daniel went home and told his friends, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, what had happened. He urged them to ask the God of heaven to show them 
his mercy by telling them the secret so they would not they would not be executed along with the other wise men of Babylon. Daniel had his own tribe and his friends who were also brought as slaves to Babylon but determined to walk with the Lord. When Daniel and friends faced significant life-threatening situations with Nebuchadnezzar, they prayed together, stood together, and brought God's glory together. Regardless of the external pressure, they were able to collectively take their stand for their faith as they actively supported one another. There is exponential power available to a tribe walking in with God and in unity with one another. As one will put thousand to flight and two will put ten thousand to flight. We are much more powerful and impactful together than on our own. This is a principle we need to tap into for success in the marketplace. Otherwise, it will be slow and difficult to do all that needs to be done. Throughout the Bible, we see illustrations of people walking and working with a close net group. Jesus had his close disciples. Moses had Aaron, Joshua, and Her. Paul always had a close group of people in each missionary journey. We also need our tribe. And the last one, our position, the last key. We'll read John 10.10. 10. The, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. Believers, we have an enemy called Satan or devil whose sole objective is to rob us of all Jesus has for us. He doesn't work alone as he's supported by a system and structure of spiritual hierarchy that is committed to this objective. It is important to surface this so we do not function as though we will go through life without facing any opposition. Even if we have, even if we have not done anything wrong, the enemy will still actively oppose us. In fact, it's usually when we are doing something right that the opposition is fiercest. 1 Corinthians 16.9 It reads, For a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. The enemy doesn't have unlimited resources, and being systematic in nature, he will tend to try and oppose us most when we are about to step into a higher level. This is understandable. As the deeper we go with God and the broader our sphere of influence, the more dangerous we become to his kingdom. This is why we are warned to always stay alert and probably more so during periods of intense spiritual exercise or seasons of transition. Ephesians 6.13 also reads, Therefore, Put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus, we have the power to overcome all the devices of the enemy. But we must also remain alert because even though the enemy is defeated, he does not fight fair. He will constantly test to see if we know who we are and what we have access to as children of God. So it's our responsibility to deepen our knowledge of our rights and responsibilities in Christ so we never give him a foothold in anything that concerns us. I pray that the Holy Spirit will help us build upon these foundations and bring increasing levels of understanding in these areas and more as he helps us walk daily in dominion as God designed. Thank you. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for 
for shedding light on your agenda and for giving us a rule in your external plan. Reveal to us what you have pointed us to do, where we are supposed to be planted in this season of our life and the fruits you are looking for in our life. Thank you that we are not without help. You have made the Holy Spirit and all he is available to us. We ask for grace to receive a fresh revelation daily of what this means as the equipment you have made available to us. Lord, we thank you for the revelation, the victory we already have through Jesus so that we can stop the enemy from taking advantage as we are not ignorant of his devices. We thank you once again, Lord, that we are more than overcomers. In Jesus' name, amen.